If you might need a blood transfusion, we run a test called a type and screen. There's two parts. The type is your ABO RH blood type. That does not change unless you undergo a bone marrow transplant. Um, but the screen part can change. That is the uh, screening test for antibodies against red blood cells. And what we're looking for there is any sign that you might react to specific antigens on the surface of donor red blood cells that you might get transfused. Because your immune system is dynamic, this can change over time. And that's why a type and screen expires after 72 hours. That's the generally agreed upon time frame in which if your type and screen is older than that, the risk is significant enough that you might have developed uh, new antibodies that a new type and screen is required to match you with the best available unit. There's a few ways you can develop positive antibody screen. The most common one is that you've previously had a blood transfusion. And even if you were transfused ABO matched blood, um, that person whose blood you received is not going to be matched on lesser antigens and you can develop antibodies against those. Second most common reason um, to develop antibodies is pregnancy. Pregnant person's blood mixes slightly with fetus's blood during pregnancy. If the fetus and pregnant person do not have the same blood type, then the pregnant person can develop antibodies based on those that RBC antigen exposure. Those are the two, two most common reasons. After that, it could be that you have an autoantibody against some of your own red blood cell antigens um, due to an autoimmune anemia, an autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Although um, if it's found on a type and screen and you're not anemic, you may have very minimal antibody production and not be hemolyzing. Much less commonly, a type and screen may be positive if you recently received an infusion of IVIG, uh, intravenous immunoglobulin, or if you recently got the Rogam shot. None of those apply. This could be due to something like a recent viral illness that's interacting with the assay um, or rarely a medication that's causing this interaction. Essentially, I would call those false positives. As recommended, the safest thing to do is to repeat your type and screen within 72 hours of uh, that surgery, and that way they can find the best compatible unit if you do end up needing a transfusion. Hope the surgery goes really well, and I hope that helps.